Hi, I'm going to show you the updates I've done on this Motor Goodsy SP1000 1980 model over the restoration that I've done to it six months prior. And I'll show you what I've done, what the additions I've done to it. Starting from the front, I've made this um, little pointer down here, and I've, I've made this out of uh, an old uh, TRX Yamaha, 8, 850 Yamaha that I found at a, um, at a motorcycle wreckers. I did have to cut it and mould it in. It was too wide for the, from the Yamaha to the Woodsy, so I had to cut it in the middle and reshape it, just squeezing it up and um, making it fit and, and obviously rebuilding it with uh, fiberglass. So that's, that's actually from a Yamaha TRX 850. Um, you can get the, the Motor Woodsy versions from the Le Mans, uh, but they are a little bit more squarer. I don't think they're as pretty looking as, as this kind of. It's a bit more rounded and, 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 um, and nicely shaped. Um, what else I've done to it? I've put a uh, cylinder protector. And what I've done here, if you notice the carburetor, I've made a feature out of the carburetors. Originally the carburetors on the SPs are actually tucked in underneath the petrol tank. And I'll show you the manifold. These are the original Motor Goodsy SP manifolds. And as you can see, they sit like that. So they actually tuck in the carburetors inside. And you'll be able to see the before and after photos and if you see my other video of this SP when I restored it, you'll be able to see the carburetors tucked in underneath. Now, to get the carburetors to stick out like this, with these original SP covers, you can, there's nothing on the market, there's no inlet manifolds on the market that will, able, will enable you to do that. You can get the, the, the Le Mans, the Le Mans um, inlet manifolds, but they do tend to throw the carburetor in line with the cover because the Le Mans has got, has got a different type of cover that allows the carburetor to be in that position. In this position here, if you notice, it's about 15 degrees upswept, so rather than being perfectly horizontal, it's on an angle upwards um, and it's another 15 degrees out from, from centre. So rather than being straight like that it's out and on an angle upwards um, I did that for different reasons a I wanted to make a feature out of these beautiful Delorto carburetors and the, and the air filter as well um, two I think um, they, they probably breathe better and they leave a lot of space inside the engine every time I clean it they're, well, they're a lot easier to clean if you want to clean the bowl underneath it's, it's just a very simple operation to clean your carburetors or even to, um, to play with your carburetor, take them off or whatever you want to do, and clean your filters. Before, when they were inside underneath there, it was a bit of a chore to take them off and all that. So I, I, I mainly did it for, for, for aesthetic reasons, but that's, that's, um, that's what I did. You'll see some before and after photos of how I've actually designed the uh, inlet manifolds cut them and angled them so if you want and, and you'll see them compared to the originals all the measurements are the same diameters and all and it's all done in stainless steel um, what else I've done is another big improvement that I've done compared to the uh, original the original uh, bike originally I had these Magneti Morelli um, points with the distributor here, which I've got to say, even though they're 35 years old, they worked very well. I mean, there was no real no reason for me to change them other than just update it to an electronic ignition. Um, but otherwise, these old Magneti Morellis really work fine, and as you can see, they're very clean. Um, the only thing you really need to do with these old points is clean them every so many thousand k's and and keep them out of moisture and humidity and wet really, otherwise they'll last forever as well. However, I did want to update with, a, the, um, with an electronic ignition, 
so the coils have been changed as well and the, and the plugs as well. Um, so the new coils sit inside there. Um, the, this new uh, ignition here, it's a, it's a German made silent hectic. It has made a difference. Um, it, it's, it's, a lot, it's a lot more um, easier to tune. If you want to advance your engine and all that, it's easy to tune with your engine and all that. And it runs nicer. It, I, I do have to say it runs a lot more smoother. And it gives you a lot more, a lot more possibilities in, in uh, tuning your engine as well. So you've got, you've got a little ignition box there, as you can see. And you can tune it in about 20, 10, 20 different settings once, once you've set the whole thing up. So that's there. Without the cover, obviously, I've just got to lift it open for for, for show you. So you, you can tune it there, but it's um it has made a really nice difference. Um, the silent hectic, the silent hectic in Australian dollars is uh was, a, was it's not cheap. It's probably the, the most expensive um, ignition kits you can buy on the market. It was 700 Australian dollars, which in uh, probably something like about 300 and something pounds, British pounds, or maybe about 650 American dollars. Um, you do need to get um, a professional auto electrician to install it for you. It does come with instructions, but the instructions that they gave were pretty much close to useless. Um, so you do need to get a uh, professionally um, professionally installed by an auto electrician or someone who really knows his, his head around electronics. Um, there are a few little things that you can do yourself, but when it comes to wiring it all up, it's quite complicated. And that was another 300 Australian dollars. So it is quite an expensive conversion. Um, if the bike's worth it, which this one definitely is, it's, it's good money spent for me. It probably wasn't necessary. I just did it because I wanted to, but um, just keep that in mind. If you want to put a solid hectic there, they're a good, they're a good kit, but they are expensive. Um, another thing that I've done, if, if you notice, is the exhaust pipe. Now, this is the original, the original motor goods exhaust pipe that came with the bike. Obviously, it's 35 years old, and what you do, what you get with motorcycles after a certain certain period of time is they do tend to rust. Now this had rust underneath it. Um, what I did do though, rather than go and buy a new one, I wanted to experiment. So what I did, I actually cut the final part of, which was the rusted bit of the exhaust pipe off. The, the, the original, originally it came up to about the end of the wheel, so it was about there. I cut it cut it down and I re-welded stainless steel plates with, 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 the, uh, with the tubing here. <clears throat> this is something you've got to get done from a boiler maker or someone who really knows he's, he's, he's welding very well because that is, uh, is nothing more than very thin chrome plated steel. It's very thin, most of it's still rusty. So you need someone who's got a very steady hand and knows how, how to do some pretty fancy TIG welding. Now the difference between this and the original is this. This is how the diagram of, this, of the muffler is inside. It's got different chambers and as you can see it's about there there's a chamber, the exhaust comes out out of that pipe, goes backwards into, into, a, into another chamber but it's, it's got a bit of a, a zigzag to do before it comes out at the back. What I've done is I've cut one of these chambers out, so I've got rid of a section, and I've put a, a wider 30 mil exhaust at the back here compared to a 20 mil that it was on, on the original. So it's got a, a bigger outlet there, it's got one less chamber, and even though it is a little bit louder, it's still very civilized, um, it's it's it, it's by no mean noisy at all, but it does have that little bit, couple of more decibels, and it just does give it a bit more, um, bit more of a, a much nicer tune to it. And I do have to say, 
it gives it, I do feel that there is it's just some a bit more a bit more uh, performance as well out of it the, the engine tends to breathe a bit better so that's something that you can do if you've got a, a, a rusty exhaust and you and before you spend money on a brand new one you could you can actually experiment and do that just cut it there where, where, you, where you find you can actually just see where the chambers are where it's just a little bit fatter you can kind of see it we well, might not be able to see it on tape but in, in the real you can so that's made a difference and i'll start the bike up later and i'll let you sound i'll let you um see, hear, hear the noise of it and if you go back onto my other video where i started it up as well you'll be able to compare the differences between the, 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 the noises the sounds of the bike what else i've done is i've added one of these handles to, to help you yank the bike up onto its center stand. This is what I've had on the uh, on the Nevada. I think these are, they're a great idea. And they just make it so much easier to yank the bike onto, onto the center stand. Even though you do have the handle there, that's just a lot more convenient, just a lot more, rather than, rather than grabbing it like that or like that, it just makes it a lot more easier. That's a great idea. And there's actually a hole there already there for something, who knows what. It just fits nice and it works well. And um, you'll notice the top box here. Now this is the top box that I had on my Nevada. If you go back onto my V7 Racer video, you'll notice I, I had a, a video with the Nevada 750. This is actually the top box that was on that Nevada. I took it off the Nevada, I sprayed it red and gold, wiped the rest of the bike, and here it is. And um, there you have it. I mean, this bike is really such a beautiful bike to, to, to ride, and it's worth every money, every dollar that I can throw on it. What I will do next video, I haven't had time yet. I am going to change these braided lines. All the braided lines on the. Uh, I'm going to change the the, the, the brake lines with braided with stainless steel braided lines. These original Brembo's. Even though they're 35 years old, they work exceptionally well. There's, again, there's no reason why to change them, but I just want to give that, the motorcycle just that modern feel. So I'll be changing the braided lines. But however, I won't be buying I won't be buying the um, ready-made kits that you can buy on the internet for the for the goodsy. I'll be making my own braided lines. So I'll be buying my own tubes and connections in the colour combinations that I like. And, and in the lengths that I like, and I'll show you how to do those braided lines, make your own braided lines, and it comes cheaper as well. So that'll be my next video. Just just keep 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 them keep in touch. So I'll start the bike up, and I'll let you hear it. There you go, 1980 model, Motor Good Z 1000 SP, restored, original, original engine, um, but just updated in a lot of things. These are a really nice bike to ride, very underrated. A lot of the SPs that you see today are being butchered, people buy them, take, them off, take all the fairings and bits and pieces off and make cafe races out of them, leave them as they are. The fairings, they, 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 they've been designed in, in the Matagoods, the wind tunnel. Um, we've got a 
very good, this, you know, really good wind protection. Um, no reason to get rid of these fairings, make it into a cafe race. It's a beautiful bike as it is. And it's an absolute pleasure to ride this thing, it really is. And it's it's a really head turner, I've got to say. Wherever I go with this bike, it's just different, different from anything else I've ever so if you get your hands on an SP, buy one, restore one, clean it all up, and you'll have a beautiful machine. Okay, thank you for watching my video. Watch my other videos. Keep in touch because I'll be making more videos. Thank you very much from Melbourne, Australia. Ciao.